Now this is an exciting day for me. This is an exciting day because I know that this day that the Lord prepared just for me, just for you, and that we can receive his mercies because they're new every morning to us. And also we can re just receive and, and move and have our being in him. Hallelujah. I'm Sherry White and I'm coming to you from Fountain of Life. Ministries International. We're home based in Athens, Georgia, but this program is going globally. This program is going out into the world. And we thank each viewer. We uh, thank you for your support and your prayers, uh, your uh, contributions. We thank you for that uh, in Jesus' name. And as you partner with this ministry, I believe that you will be blessed beyond what you can even ask or think. Because this ministry is a ministry of excellence. This ministry is a ministry of integrity and honor. And we hold up the Word of God as first place in this ministry. You know, there are signs and wonders and miracles that happen uh, through this ministry. But, you know, we, we do not follow after signs and wonders and miracles healings, but they follow us wherever we go. And I just uh, I just want to thank the Lord this day for what he's doing uh, in, in our midst and in the world and in the earth today. He is mighty. And I want to talk to you today about his energy, about the energy of God, the, the uh, just the, the power of God. You know, and and I want to start in Luke 10, 19, which is one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, but then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to some different stories in the Bible that just illustrate or demonstrate the, the power of our Lord, our Father, our Creator. In Luke 10, 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you power. That word there in the Greek is dunamis. I give you dynamite today. I give you an explosive power on the inside of you that you can bring out into this natural realm that we live in and you can change your circumstances. You can change your situations through the power of God. You know, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, work and word and power in the precious blood of the Lamb. You know, and in that blood, the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary, there is power. And that blood covenant is for you, is for me, is for every child of God. Uh, doesn't that make you excited? Doesn't that stir you up on the inside? It does me. It does me. It says, Behold, I give unto you dunamis, our power, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, they. this is from the, the, um, the 70 came back. We'll go up to uh, verse 17. The 70 returned. And they're so joyful and they're so excited because the devils were subject uh, unto, you know, through the name of Jesus, they were subject to the 70 disciples. And in verse 18, Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Jesus saw Satan get kicked out of heaven because he tried to exalt himself above the Most High God. But see, as we work with the Lord, and we walk with the Lord, then we are His sons. That's what it says in Romans 8. That as we are led by the Spirit of God, we are the sons of God. You know, I see that. Every day, I see the sons of God being manifested in the earth. And that's what the world is wanting to see. Those that are lost, those that are damaged, those that are, that are castaways, those that have no hope, they're looking for the sons of God. Well, the sons of God are full of power. 
They're full of the energy of God. And it says in verse 20, Jesus said, Nevertheless, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. What was he saying here? Our names are written in heaven. That means that we're in the family of God. That means that we have the authority and we have the energy and we have the power to overcome every situation. You know, I think back in, in the book of Exodus where Moses is, is bringing the Israelites out of bondage and Moses' name means drawn out. And he was drawing the Israelites out of the slavery and the bondage that they were in. Of course, he was a type of Savior. And, and so he starts moving with the Israelites, and all of a sudden, they come to the Red Sea. And they look at each other, and they say, you, I don't know how we're going to cross this. And the Red Sea was just, you know, powerful and and, and they look behind them and all of a sudden Pharaoh and all of his horses and chariots were, were coming after them. Well, what do we do now? What do we do now, Moses? And so Moses, you know, looked up to the Lord and the Lord said, stretch forth your rod. Now the rod indicated authority. But there was something else that divided that Red Sea. There was something else that made that sea stand up like congealed jello until the Israelites got over on dry land. And then when the, the Pharaoh and all of his armies, uh, his army and his horses and his chariots got into the middle of that sea, it closed up on them and it drowned the enemy. Do you know what it was? Do you know what it was that parted that Red Sea? Do you know what it was that made that sea stand up like jello and then close up again? It was the energy of God. It was the power of God that did that thing. You know, I am coming to the realization that we know very little about the energy of God. You know, and I want to know more. I want to operate in that supernatural, phenomenal, miracle-working energy that God has put on the inside of every believer. It comes through the Holy Spirit. If, you, if, you, if we go to the New Testament in Acts chapter 2, I am just speaking from my heart today. Uh, I am just, I am feeling the river of God. I am feeling the energy of God. Even as I began to think on uh, bringing forth this mess message, there was a stirring on the inside of me. It was like a, a nuclear explosion, if you will, uh, in, the, in the supernatural realm. In Acts chapter 2, it said that they were in one room, in one place, in one accord, in one spirit, and all of a sudden they heard a mighty rushing wind. A mighty rushing wind. Now I'm from West Texas and I know wind. I know the sound of the wind. That whirring sound. And it came into that room where they had been praying and they had been seeking the Lord. They had been told to go to the upper room and they were in the upper room and there was a mighty rushing wind and all of a sudden the power of God surged through that room. And when it surged through that room, it changed them forever. So they began to speak with other tongues. There was fire that was was like a tongues of fire were on their heads. There was something going on in that room and it was the energy of God. How many of you want the energy of God moving in your life? You don't have to be a big preacher. You don't have to be a TV evangelist. You don't have to have millions of dollars coming in 
uh, to your ministry to operate in the power of God. You know, there have been times when I have laid hands on individual to pray for healing or to pray for a miracle to come uh, into their lives and into their bodies and the energy of God starts up here uh, around my shoulder and it goes down through my arm and, and out my fingertips and I, I literally feel the energy of God transferring into that individual. You know, but I'm not satisfied with a little bit of energy. I want a lot of energy. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Why do I desire to, to have a lot of energy? Well, I'm going to show you. It's in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. What is the exceeding greatness of his power, or do us, to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Hallelujah. That's not the one I want. Um, thank you, Jesus. It's in uh, chapter 3 of Ephesians. I mean, that was a good one, but this is the one I wanted to get to. Ephesians 3, verse 20. Now to him that is able to do exceeding above all that we ask or think and say, that's Jesus. I'm saying that that's Jesus. According to the dunamis or the power or the energy that works in us. So, as we increase in that power through the Holy Spirit, as we increase in that might, as we increase in that energy, praise God, He's able to move mountains for us. He's able to bring in the finances that we need. Hallelujah. He's able to, to mend our marriages. He's able to get our children, uh, our friends off of drugs and alcohol. Hallelujah. He is able to go out there and in the miry clay and pick up that person from the gutter and put them on solid ground. Hallelujah. And set them on their way and establish them. It's according to the energy that works through us. Hallelujah. You know, just a, uh, a day or so ago, my husband and I were coming back from a trip, and we stopped at a battlefield uh, in Georgia called the Kettle Creek Battlefield. It's where the patriots were fighting the loyalists, or where uh, those in the Georgia colony uh, were fighting for their freedom. Uh, and they were called the Patriots. And there was an army uh, that they encountered, uh, some soldiers uh, that they encountered, that the numbers were, were overwhelming to the, those soldiers in Georgia. And it said that that day, that they won an overwhelming victory on that battlefield against odds that were so high that in the natural you would not go against those soldiers. And my husband and I got back in the car and we looked at our phones and our cell phones had gone back an hour. And then as we were uh, got in the car and we were traveling again, uh, we, we just uh, felt like the Holy Spirit uh, put into our hearts uh, that there on that day of the battle, there was a surge of God's energy, of God's power that went into that place and went into those Georgia soldiers, the patriots, and were they were able to overcome and win a very important battle. That energy is still there. That energy is still in that place. It's still in that place because it was deposited there. God invested in those soldiers from Georgia. I'm talking about the energy of God today and bringing it out and activating it in your life. 
It is so great that the, that the carnal mind cannot even comprehend the energy of God. A nuclear explosion cannot even explain or, or be um, compared to the energy of God. You know, God spoke and His energy, His Holy Spirit went and set every star in place. Hallelujah. Now think about another story in the Old Testament. And that's when little David came against uh, the giant Goliath. And David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And when he said that, there was something that was ignited, something that exploded in the spiritual realm, and God's energy began to flow in that situation. I did not even see that until today. As how many times have I gone to that story and I've ministered on that story of little David and Goliath and his courage and his faith. But I saw it in a different light today. And that was the light of the energy of God. And when you think about it, how much energy and power had to be in that little round stone in order to Kill somebody else. There had to be a lot of energy. Do you agree? I got so excited when I saw that. That the energy of God was surrounding David. Was surrounding his arm. Was surrounding that sling. Was surrounding that rock. And when David slung that rock, the energy of God multiplied, hit the giant, and he dropped to the ground. You know, I want so much energy to come out of my mouth, hallelujah, that when I speak, things change, hallelujah. Hope comes. Faith comes. Love comes. Finances come in the name of Jesus. There are three people that are viewing right now and you are in a financial crisis. I see that you are in a financial crisis. You are like the Israelites that have come to the Red Sea and you've come to your end and you've said, I do not know what we're going to do, where our meal, next meal is coming from. And I'm telling you that the power of God and the energy of God that is on the inside of you, you need to release it right now. In Jesus' name, we just release that energy and power that is in you to believe that God is able to bring those finances to you, to bring food to your table, to bring gas for your automobile. God is able to do exceeding above what we even think or imagine according to the power or the energy that works in us. Praise the name of Jesus. Our God is awesome. I said our God is awesome. Our God is awesome. To stand on that battlefield and to feel the energy of God and that the surrounding atmosphere was charged with his power and then to get in the car and to see that our cell phones had done something weird. Never happened to us before. I'm telling you, if you want God's power and his energy, you can have it today. Let's ask him for it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just ask for your energy and your power to surge through us to surge through our mouth, to surge through our body, destroying every sickness, destroying every disease in our bodies, uh, to bring blood pressures to normal, uh, to destroy diabetes, uh, to destroy cancer. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you are, you are opening the Red Sea to us, and we are going over on dry land, and we're going to sing, and we're going to dance, and we're going to shout uh, the victory. Hallelujah! We just praise you and we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing for us. All that you're doing for us. We ask you for that energy. We ask you for that power. This day, just put your hand on uh, your computer uh, and just uh, as touching and agreeing, 
Uh, Lord, we're agreeing for every person who's watching, who's believing for this energy, that your energy is surging through them. It's coming up from the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of them. And Lord, that you are overtaking them uh, with your power and your energy uh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Receive his energy today. Thank you for watching.